So what is the Environmental Performance Index? The EPI is an international ranking system of countries based on their environmental health. It is a biennial index first started in 2002 as the Environment Sustainability Index by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Yale Center of Environmental Law and Policy and Columbia University Center for International Earth Information Network. EPI 2022 uses 40 performance indicators to assess and rank 180 countries. The report says it uses the most recent data and indicators measure how close countries are to meeting internationally established sustainability targets for specific environmental issues. The, one, the, the 40 indicators are under the broad categories of climate change performance, environmental health and ecosystem vitality. The 2022 API has included new parameters to its earlier assessments with projections of progress towards net zero emissions in 2050 as well as new air quality indicators and sustainable pesticide use. How poor is the EPI assessment of India? With a rank of 180 and a score of 18.9, India has fallen from rank 168 and a score of 27.6 in 2020. India comes after Pakistan, Bangladesh, Vietnam and Myanmar. The poorest performers, Denmark tops the list with a score of 77.9. India ranks close to the bottom on number of indicators including ecosystem vitality 178th, biodiversity 179th, Biodiversity Habitat Index 170th, Species Protection, Protection Index 175th, Wetland Loss Air Quality 179th. With President Ramnath Kovin's term set to end on July 24, the process to elect his successor has been kicked off with the Election Commission's announcement of the schedule on Thursday. The Electoral College for the presidential elections has 4,809 members, which includes 233 Rajya Sabha and 543 Lok Sabha members, and 4,033 MLAs of state assemblies. Each member has a certain vote value based on the strength of the population they represent. The voting is on July 18. The total value of the votes that will be up for grabs is 10,86,432. The BJP-led NDA's tally is 5,25,706, around 20. In the East Chin Sea, Chin is expanding its fishing fleet, which is sparking tensions with its neighbors. Austin said, in South Chin Sea, Chin is using outposts on man-made islands, bristling with advanced weaponry to advance its illegal maritime claims. He added, we are seeing Chinese vessels plunder the region's provisions operating illegally within the territorial waters of other Indo-Pacific countries. Speaking about India as a partner for the US in the region, Austin said, we are also weaving closure ties with other partners. I am especially thinking of India, the world's largest democracy. We believe that its growing military capability and technological prowess can be a stabilizing force in the region. Commenting on Beijing's actions in the Indo-Pacific Ocean, Indo-Pacific region, Austin mentioned, we are seeing growing coercion from Beijing. We have witnessed a steady increase in provocative and destabilizing military activity near Taiwan. We remain focused on maintaining peace, stability, and the status quo across the Taiwan Strait. But he said, Chin's moves threaten to undermine security, stability, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. That's crucial for this region and it's crucial for the wider world. Maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait isn't just U.S. interest, it's a matter of international concern. Austin said that the U.S. is working closely with both our competitors and our friends to strengthen the guardrails against conflict. He specifically mentioned that it includes fully open lines of communication with Chin's defense leaders to ensure that we can avoid any miscalculations. These are deeply important conversations and the United States is fully committed to doing our part. Austin and Chin's defense minister Wei Feng held a bilateral meeting on Friday on the sidelines of the event. Austin's remarks come three days after General Charles Flynn, commanding general of the United States Army Pacific, 
said in Delhi on June 8 about infrastructure build-up. I believe that the activity level is eye-opening. I think some of the infrastructure that is being created in the Western Theatre Command is alarming. He added that much like across all of their military arsenal, one has to ask the question why. The question comes as to what are their intentions. The People's Liberation Army PLA Western Theatre Command is responsible for the 3488 km long border with India. The next day Chains responded to Flynn's comment by stating that he is, of, he is fanning the fire. Chains Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lisan said in his press briefing that some US officials have pointed fingers and sought to fan the flame and drive a wedge between the two countries. Calling it disgraceful, Zhao had said, we hope the US could do more things that contribute to the regional peace and stability. Chin has continued to harden its positions along the border with India and countries in the region should have to face political intimidation by Beijing. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd J. Austin said Saturday. The comments come just days after a top U.S. Army general had said that Chin's infrastructure development along the entire area opposite the border with India is alarming. Speaking at the Shangri-La Dialogue, a security conference organized by the International Institute of Strategic Studies in Singapore, where top Chinese leaders are also present, Austin said, we are seeing Beijing continuing to harden its position along the border that it shares with India. He added that the Indo-Pacific countries shouldn't face political intimidation, economic coercion or harassment by maritime militia.